All right, welcome everybody. This is Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourbiznow.com and jumpstartpublishing.net. Yes, I have a whole publishing company on top of the business coaching uh, that I do. And I love working with entrepreneurs like you who want to make a lot more money do, doing what you love without working so hard. So my goal today with this short webinar is to, or masterclass, I should say, is to go over some of the biggest things I've seen over the last 19 years in my business on what's going to move the needle for you and what's going to make it so you can create the most consistent revenue generating business ever, because that's what we want, right? We want to get off the roller coaster of cash flow and we want to get into consistent cash flow, lots of money coming in. Some of the things I see though, the mistakes that entrepreneurs make is number one, they don't prepare for the what if. They don't prepare for the what if. That means uh, that if, life happens, right? And someone in your family gets sick or you get sick or uh, someone in your family you have to go take care of, you're a caregiver all of a sudden, or there's an accident or anything happens, the what if, right? That we never plan for. If something in your business goes awry or your life goes awry and you don't have the system set up to take care of that, then the income that you were making or planning on making that month or subsequent months is just down the drain, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, <laughs> we need to resuscitate. We need to resuscitate our business because it's just not working. Uh, there's no money coming in if you're not working on your business or working in your business, I should say, right? So if that's the case for you, then you want to listen up because this is my life's work. This is what I'm extremely passionate about. And it, what breaks my heart is to see that so many entrepreneurs, the majority of entrepreneurs out there, the average money that they are making is less than 72000 a year. Now, some of you might be saying, wow, $72,000 a year would be amazing, Katrina. And yeah, if you're just starting out, that's a great goal to have, especially in the first couple of years of your business. But I can tell you after being in business for so long now that uh, 72,000 or even 100,000 is hardly any amount of money to be, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's when you start really putting in the structures, the system, the team that you need, the technology, the training that you're going to need in order to run your business, a $100,000 business uh, in revenue turns out to very little profits because of all the things you're investing in. If you're not investing in all these things, you're probably not you know, most people are never going to see more than say 40 to $70,000. And I don't want that for you. I want you to make a lot more money doing what you love. Now, a lot of us grew up with the thinking, uh, maybe from our parents. I know my parents didn't say this, but some people said, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Well, actually, that's not true. My parents did say that money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, you know, you have to work really hard and in order to make more money and you want me to make bring home more money. Well, I'm gonna have to take get overtime or do double shifts or get a second job. Like, I don't want you to work that hard. That is my, I don't want you to work that hard. So the goal is to work less and make more. And there are so many things that um, come into play in order to make that a reality. And a lot of entrepreneurs never learn these things. They might learn some of them, but you don't learn and implement all of them. And it's really key to really look at all of these eight areas. Now I'm going to show you a snapshot of the eight keys. So you can take a picture in a minute, but my goal is not to just PowerPoint you to death here, but it's to really just tell you what, uh, what I think through some stories and different things, uh, what you can do. So let me share <clears throat> the eight things that you will want to take a picture of. Okay, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. All right, so the eight secrets to a consistent money-making business. It seems like a lot and it seems like, Katrina, oh my God, this is overwhelming, right? But these are all the different aspects that make up a successful business. It really is, it's true. You've got to know your big picture vision, your goals, and believe it's possible. And this is probably, this is one of the ones I want to touch on more today. 
and then develop the right pricing and offerings for you and your ideal lifestyle. I can tell you that 99% of entrepreneurs that I speak with are not charging enough and they need to raise their rates, which means they need to raise their confidence and get more clarity perhaps in what they're selling in order to raise their rates. So that, that all goes together. Uh, clarity with what you're selling breeds more confidence, which breeds more ability to know your worth and your value to charge more. So these things are critical, people. If you want to make more money, sometimes you just need to double your rates <laughs> and you can make more money with the clients you already have. Imagine that, right? You don't even have to work harder. Just the same clients. Just raise your rates. Um, exuding massive confidence to attain positive expert positioning. A lot of time, positioning to me is like your authority. Like, are you the authority in your area? Do you exude that expert status? Are you the go-to gal or guy in your industry or your marketplace? If you are not positioning yourself as that expert, don't have to be a celebrity, okay? I know some people say, oh, I don't want to be a celebrity. And, you know, I had someone say that to me just this week. And I'm like, well, it's not about being a celebrity. It's about being well-known, well-respected, and well-sought after in your industry or marketplace. That is positioning. That means you have to look the part on your website, on your social media, your graphics, how you show up to calls, what you're doing, what you're wearing, what you're saying, okay? That's positioning and confidence. <laughs> and then implementing smart, consistent, yet ever-evolving marketing practices you want to stop doing what's not working if you've made a good attempt at doing uh, it somewhat well and it just didn't work for you. Not every marketing strategy works for every business, okay? There's 20 different marketing strategies that I typically teach. And there's, you know, you, I'm kind of teaching people now that you need to pick a lane. You pick a lane either like the networking speaking lane where you're more visible and out in public and talking to people and on calls or your behind the scenes computer, social media on your computer kind of lane. Because honestly, if you did full time what you need to do in both areas, it would be like working, um, I don't know, 100 hours a week or something like that. It's insane how much you need to do in each one of these areas to really make your mark and make a difference and get enough followers and enough people to pay attention. So it's not just about um doing all the things it's doing a few things really well and consistent consistently in your marketing then you want to look at enlisting systems strategies and team to stay organized so organization is probably one of the biggest things i see people failing in and it's not because you're just you know it's not because you're a failure it's just you don't know what you don't know you don't know the best systems, the best technology, uh, the best organization strategies to implement in this business. Because let's face it, most of us had jobs before we started our business and there was already systems in place. People told us what to do and how to do it. Now we have to create those systems. We have to create the organization. We have to create all the strategies and we have to figure out the technology, which I don't recommend. There's too many technologies out there. I want to show you like, how to determine which technology systems and organization strategies you need for your business because everybody's different, okay? And then sustain a positive money mindset with swift money-making decisions. Way too many entrepreneurs wait and wait and wait and wait to pull the trigger on a decision, which is crazy. Money follows speed. You want to learn something, you take a class. You sign up for it right away. You want to go and, uh, you know, get help with a speech or learn how to speak or get published in a book or something like that. You go and you do it. You can't sit around and say, well, one day or someday, or when I start making more money, then I'll do the thing. No, you have to look at what's the logical stuff you need to do in your business and put the money into it. You have, you, it's not like a shoestring budget kind of thing. When you, uh, what I say to people about money and investing in your business is if you wanted to become a nurse right now, or you would, you would not just start walking into a hospital and start poking people with needles, you would go to nursing school. How much is nursing school? I don't know, $30,000, $50,000. It could be way more. It could be a few years too to learn really what it takes to be a nurse. And then of course you have to go out and find a position, right? So as an entrepreneur, a lot of times you think, oh, I can just put up a website, 
put a business card together, show up on a few Zoom calls and I'm good. I'm going to get $100,000 worth of clients. And I'm like, okay, that's not really logical, right? Because you need to learn how to be an entrepreneur. You need to learn how, what's important about your website. You need to learn about the marketing strategies because it is not the same as corporate. You need to learn how to position yourself. You need to learn what to say. You need to learn every little thing about your business. There's like 462 things you need to learn about being a profitable entrepreneur. Let's face it. And most people don't take the training that is required to be the entrepreneur. Okay. Then finally, don't settle for anything less than 100% personal happiness, love, and support. And this is a big one because I'm going to stop sharing right at the moment. The personal happiness, love, and support is the biggest thing that's probably stopped me in my business along the way. And it's the biggest thing that I've had to overcome, frankly, because when I started my business, I was in my starter marriage with my first husband and he was a great guy and we were awesome in the beginning. Uh, and cause we both met doing door to door. He actually hired me uh, as a door to door salesperson, which <laughs> right crazy, but it was like the best nine months of my life because I really learned the value of asking for the business and then getting turned down a lot. I got turned down a lot. Okay. And so it was, it made doing my own business so much easier when I was, <laughs> when I was able to, oh, you don't want it. Okay. Next, you know, it was, I would just keep on knocking on the different doors. So we met in that company and then we finally left the company, decided to get married. And so I thought he was kind of entrepreneurial because he was knocking on doors. Right. I mean, that's the, the epitome of salesperson. Right. And so, but when we got married, he got a job and so did I. So I had a job and he had a job and after a few years, I got the entrepreneur bug and I learned what it would take to start my own business. So I was in advertising sales. I would go knocking on doors in my local area to people to see if they wanted to run an ad in the local newspaper, right? And they would usually say, half of them would say yes, half would say no. The ones that said yes, I would say 99% of them didn't know what to put in their ad. And so I would advise them and consult with them on what to do in their ad and then and how long they would need to do it the frequency right so it's kind of like in your business right well you know well i'm going to do social media well i'm just going to post and see what happens right that's like running an ad one time in the newspaper that doesn't get any results and so i would advise you know how to do a consistent revenue generating uh business with your marketing plan and uh, but when I got the entrepreneur bug and I went out learning more and I would take classes and when I finally went to this really three day workshop in L.A. when I left up in Northern California, I had to fly down, get a hotel, plus pay three thousand dollars for this three day event. Mind you, back then, this was in 2006. And uh, boy, I didn't I mean, I could barely afford, I couldn't afford that workshop at the time. I had to wait until the very last second in order to move some money around so I could put it on a credit card and get down there, right? And But I knew I needed to be there. I didn't say, oh, 3,000, I got to go wait until I can make $3,000 in order to go to this workshop. No, I knew the workshop was the keys to the city. It was the keys to everything I needed to know that I didn't know about being an entrepreneur. It was that true entrepreneur training, and it truly was too. And that's where I found my first mentor and hired her and uh, got into her mastermind program, which had like 12 people in it for the year. We got lots and lots of uh, access to her one-on-one -on -one and in a group. And that was about $15,000. And I'm like, at the time I was like, I can't even afford that. But you know what I did? I did it on faith. I knew that I was smart. I knew that all I needed was instruction on what to do to get where I needed to go, how to do this and how to do that and how not to do all these other things. And I knew if I just trusted that this person would show me how the money would come. And it did, okay? I had to trust, I had to have faith, not only in myself, but this other person, that they knew what they were doing and they were gonna tell me. Um, but I'll tell you, the relationship with my first husband at the time was not so good because he didn't understand like in having to invest before you make. So he was like, well, you gotta make more money. Well, I need to learn how to make more money before I can make more money. How, I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? So. He, I did what I needed to do. He didn't like it. And we ended up really, you know, going our separate ways because 
he was not supportive of what I wanted to do. And I even had support like from my parents and all that. They threw me some extra cash. So we weren't like struggling or anything like that. So, I mean, luckily I had, I had it figured out and I had the support I needed and I was able to ask. Sometimes people don't ask for that support when they need it from friends or family who sometimes are very willing to, you know, donate to your cause kind of thing. And uh, so that was the year that I really learned what I didn't know I didn't know. And that was really the start of me going on a bigger path and having bigger goals. And this goes back to knowing what's possible. Step number one is you don't know what you don't know. And until you discover or you're around the right people who can get you thinking bigger, get you thinking about helping a lot more people, making a bigger impact, <clears throat> but also making a hell of a lot more money, like, and showing you, like, these are all the people that are making more money. These are all the people that are charging a lot more than you. You can do this too. Come on this way, right? And inspiring you and motivating you. And that's what people need. That's what entrepreneur, entrepreneurs need is they need the people they need the tribe. They need the tribe that's going to say, you can do this. Let me show you how. Just do this. Just do that. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't invest in is that tribe. They might, you know, go to a free call, watch some free videos, maybe take a course or something. But getting that, ugh, I, could, I mean, I can't even, I wouldn't even be where I am today if it wasn't for that one on one that I got. And that close mastermind with 12 people who said, oh, Katrina, you need to do this. Or I've done this over here. I've seen so-and-so do this. You should have this idea. I mean, the Jumpstart brand came from that mastermind. It, the, we used to be Jumpstart Your Marketing. And for many years, it was Jumpstart Your Marketing. And now it's Jumpstart Your Biz Now and Jumpstart Publishing and Jumpstart Your Sales and Jumpstart Your This and Jumpstart all kinds of things. That would not have come about without that mentoring, that mastermind, and that bigger picture thinking, right? If I was just sitting at home myself trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to position myself? How am I going to brand myself? What am I going to do? Who's this for? And da, da, da. Like it would, it doesn't just all fall into your head. The universe just doesn't say, oh, you want information? Okay, here you go. Like it just doesn't happen that way. You have to go get it. You have to go find it. And yeah, in the process, you might make a couple not so great uh, investments or not so great decisions, but you got to keep going right? I've made tens of thousands of dollars of not so great decisions or bought products and stuff when I'm not a product learner. It took me, I don't know, probably till at least 2010 to, uh, and that's uh, eight years into my business to learn, stop buying products, Katrina, because you're not a product learner. You don't go and listen and do the work. You won't do it. It'll just sit in your computer and you won't do it. So you, I have to hire people, I hire people one-on-one. -on -one. I go to workshops where they teach stuff, where I can be in a body of people learning the thing and implementing the thing. Um, that's how I best learn. Now, along the way, obviously, if you're a coach or consultant, you want to create all kinds of different opportunities because there's lots of people like me. There's people like you who might like products, right? And so you want to create those different options for your buyers. Um, but so back to the story of my first husband, uh, you know, we really grew apart. And the hard part was this was the thing about don't settling for anything less than 100% happiness, love and support. I was uh, 35 when I left that marriage and I thought to myself, well, I could stay out. I could stay here longer, I guess, but I wasn't feeling loved. I wasn't feeling supported. I wasn't getting um, the... Um, I would say even the, the intimacy that I needed. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to live another 40, 50 years. I don't want to live like this. I need, I know there's something better out there for me. So I trusted again, that the grass was greener, right? I trusted that it will all work out. That would throw me into the dating world again. Did that suck? Of course it did. But I knew that it was going to be better than settling for someone who didn't support me. And it's always better. Okay. Now I didn't have kids. We had a dog and a cat and I got the dog. I got the better end of the deal. But so when people are in a unhappy relationship, they sometimes think, well, I have to stay for the kids. 
I disagree. I'm a product of divorce. And thank God my parents didn't stay together because they were just not meant for each other, right? And now I'm a stepmom of a 12 year old and her mom and dad, my husband, they are not a good match at all. And she would be miserable if they were still together trying to work it out for her, right? There's never a good reason. You are gonna pass on the best qualities to your kids, your grandkids, if you take care of you first and then your family and then your clients and then everybody else. The problem is most people do it backwards. Everybody else first, let me just volunteer for everything. Let me just help you over here, help you over here. And then I'll help my clients. And then maybe I'll help my family, my husband and my kid. If I have time, they might have to figure it out themselves or make their own dinner or get pizza, right? Um, and then maybe if there's a 10 minutes in a day, I might be able to take care of myself by you know, taking a shower <laughs> or putting on some makeup or, you know, maybe buying a new shirt on Amazon because I certainly can't spend enough time going out shopping for that. So it just, it breaks my heart to see people settling for unsuccessful, you know, really not happy relationships. And um, I just believe there's always someone for, for you. So I definitely look at the love side of your life. When I work with someone in a business coaching environment, Oh, yes, we look at your significant other relationship because oftentimes if you are not doing the marketing, the lead generation, the follow up calls, the the sales conversations, it's because of something on the love side of your life. It could be a significant other. It could be a friend or family member that it's a naysayer. It could also be your lack of self-confidence. Like maybe you're not totally sure of your abilities. Um, and sometimes it takes, takes a quick little turnaround of the way of thinking, a different perspective that you hadn't thought of that can change someone's perspective on themselves. And I've had that happen many times with clients. And I'll say, look, <clears throat> I'll be in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a client and they'll be like, but I don't think I can charge that much. You know, I just started my business last year and I can't possibly charge as much as so-and-so has been in business for 12 years. And I said, yes, and you have been helping people with the thing you're selling now for dozens of years in your corporate career or in your, in your personal life, haven't you? And they say, yes. And I said, okay, so you have dozens of years of experience. You certainly can charge it now. Just because you weren't charging for it then and you are now does not make you any less worthy or any less capable or any less uh, expensive of a person. So sometimes it's just that quick reframe and they're like, you're right. And then instantly in a call, they will like triple their rates. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then the next day they'll go out and get a client at that new rate. And that's what drives me. That's what drives me is helping people make so much more money doing what they love, knowing their value, but also there's plenty of people out there. So if you're worried about, well, you know, some people will say, oh, but people aren't even paying the rates I have now, Katrina, how can I possibly charge more? Well, you're just talking to the wrong people. You're not talking to enough of the right people, period. If you're only talking to a dozen people in a conversation every month, that is nowhere near enough people that you need to perhaps to get the, peop the right people at the right price points because there's billions of people on this planet and you just need this many in order to really fill your business, I am sure. And you just aren't talking to enough people. And why aren't you talking to enough people? It could be that you're holding yourself back because you feel hesitant or you don't feel confident enough or you're not clear on what you're offering, what the price point is or the value. It could be that you don't feel like you like your website because it's not pre presenting you enough, uh, well enough, right? As a professional and because you did it yourself or whatever, or the whoever built it didn't do a very good job and or it's old, <clears throat> or maybe you don't even have a website and that's why you're not going out there, or you're comparing yourself to somebody else in the field, right? Oh, they have three books and I don't have any books, so how could I possibly go out there because they're obviously the expert. Woe is me, stop it, is what I say. I say, stop it. I'm like, there's plenty of place for you in the marketplace and you just have to own it. We have to own it. We have to own our confidence. We have to own what it is we're selling. We have to own uh, the fact that we deserve to make a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money, I don't care what your goal is. You know, I had a coach one time that um, my goal, when I, when I hired him, he was a couple coaches after this first one that I had, right? At the time I was like, okay, I'm ready to make $100,000 now. How the hell do I do that? 
And so I hired this guy who said, I can help you make more money. I'll show you. And uh, I said, okay, great. So I paid him $25,000 that year. And the whole year, it was a small mastermind and some one-on-one, -on -one, which is really key, you guys, because you don't want to just get in group where they're just talking in general to the whole group. You really need one-on-one -on -one if you're not making the money you want to make. So <clears throat> I went through his uh, went through his program. I went to some calls with him. And what did he tell me? I said, okay, this is all. I put the buffet out. This is what I'm doing. This is my website. This is what I'm doing online. This is what my marketing is. This is what I'm selling. This is what I'm pricing. Here's my confidence. Here's my speaking. Go tell me what else I need to do. <laughs> and he said, Katrina, you just need to be love. And I'm like, what? Like, what's that? I don't understand. <laughs> you just need to be love. You're doing too much. You just need to be. And I'm like, oh my God, how is that going to help me make any more money? I don't understand. If I don't do more, how can I make more? And he said, you just need to be more, be love, just be open, be love. My whole group that year too was telling me the same thing. And I was like, I don't know what you got. I was crying because I was really like, I need, I'm a doer. I needed like to know what to do. And they were telling me to just be. And it was very frustrating. And I'll tell you, um, <clears throat> I don't know what I did that year because I really didn't make a lot of changes in my business, but I would go to events and conferences and I would just kind of go there and walk into the room and be a positive light in the room, right? Like they were telling me to do, okay, whatever. And the right people just started coming and I'm like, holy cow, this is, I didn't really know it was working until the end of the year when I looked at my numbers and lo and behold, I made a hundred thousand dollars that year. What the hell? Like, <laughs> and I might tell you that I also met who the guy that I thought I was meant to be with. I met a man. So I got love that year and money that year, I call it. So I had love and money. I had it all right. <clears throat> and so you think, so this, this love stuff, this be love stuff kind of is important. So I would go on and on and do that kind of stuff. And, and now I do talk about it a little. I do love the doing, however. So there's plenty of people on this planet who teach the being and teach the, you know, all the internal stuff. I love the, <clears throat> I, I can identify when people are having issues and glitches with the internal stuff and I can give them some guidance. But what I really love to teach people is the doing because most people do not do enough and they do not have it all flow together into a smooth running money-making business machine. And so I really love to find those holes and opportunities where you're missing out. Like you go to, I have clients that do this still. It drives me absolutely crazy. They'll go do a speaking gig and then they'll come back and they might make a couple phone calls or send a couple emails, but they don't put all those people into a database and follow up with everybody. They don't send ongoing nurture emails and, and content newsletters to their email database. And, you know, a lot of times it's, they just are afraid of being seen. They're afraid of whatever content might come out of their mouth that they're going to get judged and it's a constant work in progress. It is. It's a constant work in progress with all of this stuff because you can say, oh, I'm going to be consistently running an email newsletter, but you could also fall off the wagon. You could do it for a couple of weeks and then it does something happens and you fall, right? And so there's the some of the key things I was mentioning earlier, right? Team, systems, automation, technology, so many people don't put those right things in place with that. And then they get distracted or something happens or the what if happens and they fall off the consistency track and things get don't get picked up again. And then the momentum you had gets lost and the leads you had are cold and the sales potential that you had there in your pipeline is just flat. And the people have found other people because you weren't consistent. And so I just, my goal is to really help people create more smooth running, consistent revenue generating businesses. And we have to look at everything you're doing from the big picture of your goals and the kind of lifestyle you wanna live and the way that you wanna work with people, what you wanna sell, who you want to work for and with, 
um, what you're going to price yourself, the confidence level. We have to look at the team, the technology, the systems. We have to look at the money making decisions. We have to look at what you're learning and what you're not implementing. And we have to look at your love and support system too. And if it doesn't all flow together and you aren't, there's things missing in any of these areas. It's just, I see it being a really tough road and I don't want people to struggle so hard without so much money, without the money they deserve. And so that's why I'm here on this planet. That's why I'm here today teaching this. And so hopefully this is helpful. And I will show the slide one more time if you wanna catch a picture of it. <clears throat> um, all right, so here's that eight steps again. And, you know, again, I there's, I would just love to help anybody who is struggling with this. And the best way to do that, I know people don't like to sign up for calls, right? Oh, Katrina, you're just going to sell me on this call. That is not my intent. Trust me. I only have room for a few clients every month to add to the one-on-one -on -one schedule or to get into my high-end mastermind. Um, and so I, I'm very selective on who I work with, but I'm happy to talk to anybody. Okay, that feels like they need help. Because if I'm not a good fit, I know who is, or I know how to help you and guide you into the right area so that you stop wasting time and money in the wrong place. And so really the best thing to do is to come and have a call with me at, you can go to askkat.biz, A-S-K-K-A-T dot B-I-Z, or go to the, the website, jumpstartyourbiznow.com and go to uh, start here. And there's a way to have a call with me there. And <clears throat> it, it's, you know, yeah, you, you do have to invest in your business. And I'm one of the best people to do that with, frankly, because I'm not going to steer you wrong. And I'm going to make it the most affordable way possible that you can possibly build your business. And I have all the tools and all the training on a lot. So everything, almost everything in your business that you could possibly want. So why would you go get one piece of it from this person and one piece of it from that person and one piece of it from this person over here and one piece of it from that person? Because none of it's then going to flow together. It's just kind of silly to do that. I'm going to take this $200 thing over here and this $500 course and this person's group program. It's like, it's going to take you forever to build a business. Let's just hurry up and get things in motion so you can see a consistent revenue generating business sooner than later. And so that's why I invite you to a call with me. Come to my event. If you're, you know, I have events twice a year. You can go to jumpstartevents.net, jumpstartevents.net to find any event that I might be holding at any time. And I would just love to have a conversation with you. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much for being here.